Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We will continue with A2 German Grammar and we are almost finished with our whole course. So, let's continue. We have a new topic today and the topic is not that familiar but also important. It is the so-called N declination. I have a little definition on the right side and we will check it out together. N declination is the declination of a certain group from male nouns who are in singular in the cases genitive, dative and accusative. They are special because they get an ending which can be an or n. This is the n declination in a short term. Let's check out the example. Der Patient sitzt vor dem Arzt. Here we have no declination, but in the other one, der Arzt untersucht den Patienten. There we have the en. So if we check out der Arzt in its different forms, we have nominativ der Arzt, die Ärzte, genitiv des Arztes, der Ärzte, dativ dem Arzt, den Ärzten and akkusativ den Arzt, die Ärzte. As you can see, it just happens that the arts does not have in all terms here the en or n. But if we check out der Patient, same concept, der Patient, die Patienten, des Patienten, der Patienten, dem Patienten, den Patienten. Den Patienten, die Patienten. So you can see really clear that we have this ending and that the word der Patient is definitely one of those categories. So when do we need it? We have here a little list, which is really helpful. Of course, there's always a special word or something that is excluded, but at least it helps. So you don't have to learn everything by heart. So we have male nouns with the following endings. E. Der Junge, der Kollege, the colleague. This also goes, of course, for occupations which are male. For example, der Biologe, der Kardiologe, the heart doctor, cardiologist, der Archäologe, the archaeologist, and stuff like this. Next one is animals, der Hase, der Löwe, and so on, and nationalities. Der Pole, der Kroate, der Sachse, der Deutsche, and so on. Next one are the endings with ist, der Journalist, for example, der Pazifist, words that end with ENT, der Student, ENT, der Praktikant, and then we have AT, ET, IT, OT, der Automat, der Athlet, der Satellit, der Pilot. Don't forget, it's just a coincidence that we have living things here, but der Satellit, der Automat, is not living. So it looks like it's only for people, but it's not. It's all male nouns. We have a little difference between words that have in genitive, dative, accusative, and plural an N, for example, der Nachbar, der Bauer, and we do have other categories where the singular, genitive, dative, or accusative is with N, but the plural is with AN. So this is also a little thing you have to pay attention to. For example, der Herr, des Herrn, die Herren. This is a little tricky, but with practice, reading, and exercising, it will be fine. So let's do the first exercise. Let's read the example. Junge. The boy. Wie heißt der Junge? Ich kenne den Jungen nicht. Please, if you want, press pause, do the exercise, and then we will compare. Okay. 
Wie heißt der Kollege? Ich kenne den Kollegen nicht. Wie heißt der Student? Ich kenne den Studenten nicht. Wie heißt der Journalist? Ich kenne den Journalisten nicht. Wie heißt der Präsident? Ich kenne den Präsidenten nicht. Wie heißt der Patient? Ich kenne den Patienten nicht. Wie heißt der Polizist? Ich kenne den Polizisten nicht. Wie heißt der Soldat? Ich kenne den Soldaten nicht. Wie heißt der Nachbar? Ich kenne den Nachbarn nicht. Wie heißt der Kunde? Ich kenne den Kunden nicht. Wie heißt der Architekt? Ich kenne den Architekten nicht. Here we have a little special thing because, you know, the language evolves and stuff. You could also say, ich kenne den Architekt nicht. I'll be honest. This is just for the mouth, also easy, and this is how it evolved. And our second exercise for today, the last one. Here you have to decide also if it's dative or accusative. Let's see the example. Experte fragen. Fragst du den Experten? Are you asking the expert? Of course, this is accusative, and we have the en here for the declination. If you want, you can press pause and continue this exercise. Hilfst du dem Studenten? Kennst du den Pianisten? Besuchst du den Nachbarn? Kaufst du den Diamanten? Reparierst du den Automaten? Glaubst du dem Experten? Erkennst du den Präsidenten? Two things I want to say before we finish. Of course, we have here the verbs that are influencing the article. Jemandem helfen, to help someone. But then we have accusative, for example, jemanden kennen, to know somebody. This is accusative, and so on. And the other thing I want to say... Things that end with the T, and I just must say, even the president here, to be honest, if you say, erkennst du den president? Nobody would say it's wrong, I think, because it's just the feeling of the language. The same, reparierst du den automat? It's okay, it's not the most correct thing to say it, but I just give you this example because I don't want you to be confused. If someone asks you something without this declination and you say like, this is wrong, this is right, it can happen. Even Germans don't make everything correct and the language also changes. Learn it the right way, please, the way I showed you today. And then if you hear someone saying it passively, you immediately know, okay, this must be because of some changes in the language or some evolving or making it easier for the mouth, right? And this is it for today, a short but important lesson. I hope it helped you. Thank you for your support. Please like, subscribe, watch my other videos. I have a lot of tutorials, whole lessons for A1 and A2. And you can also visit us on Facebook where I have also language meetings. I see you next week the latest. Bye!